Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh viewers Welcome to a very special live and exclusive show Here from the London studios With your host Naveed Hussain Viewers it's a very special show today As you know The quadrivium of Ahlul Bayt Presented by none other than Muhammad Musa who joins me live from the United States in his home for yourself the viewers to call in for questions that you may have about the different topics that the brother Muhammad Musa has discussed over the months that we have been showing here from the Alabed Studios. Indeed, his lectures are very unique. His lectures require all of us to take time out and to listen to because the type of topics that the brother has covered are very, very unique, which have not been heard before on Alabed Studios. And it actually gives me great pleasure and honour to be here today to have a discussion with brother who, who has taken time out to be with us, the viewers and myself. Viewers, you can see the number on your screens. You can call in with your questions and speak to brother Muhammad Musa or you can text in your questions. Uh, so that we can inshallah get this show running We have with us Muhammad Mouf, uh, Musa live From the United States Brother Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And welcome to Your own show in fact This is your own show Quadrivium of Ahlul Bayt Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala 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 I thank you, uh, brother, brother, for this interview. I thank the Bayt. Uh, Salam alaikum for our viewers all around the world. Today, uh, I'm very honored to be on your TV and for all your questions, sure. specifically all the lectures that made a little bit of noises here and there. Mm -hmm. Some people didn't understand it. They were a little bit uh, difficult. But today, I'm here to clarify all, the, all this and to give new understanding to understand Ahlul Bayt from the scientific point of view. MashaAllah. Thank you very much indeed, brother. And, and to be honest with you, I was, in fact, the, the whole team, the Ahlul Bayt team were waiting for this time, for this day, that we need a live show with our dear brother Muhammad Musa. Of course, it's not easy with the time difference in the United States and the time difference here in London. It's not easy to... Uh, be available at the same time but alhamdulillah here we are today uh, with one another uh, having this show and all the people who are watching this in fact gives you the opportunity we have with us Muhammad Musa you have seen his shows you have seen his lectures and, and this is from personal experience the lectures took me by surprise these lectures I have not heard in, uh, on, on podiums, on any members of any Islamic centres or even in university lecture halls. But our dear brother Muhammad Musa, who, just a little bit about this brother, his, little, his background, I'll inshallah ask the brother to uh, elaborate on his, back, uh, on his background. Brother is 31 years old. Um, so he specialises in robotic engineering, artificial intelligence, words that we only hear through the movies, words that we only hear or see in textbooks. We do not associate such uh, yeah. words with Islam, but inshallah the brother will go into detail with this. Uh, he has been giving lectures since 2013 with over 9 million clicks and 32,000 followers, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. um, I can't. I would stop here and ask the brother to please elaborate to just give a background so that those who have just tuned in now, it's of mm -hmm. course just ten minutes past nine 
uh, in the evening here in UK. Uh, those who have tuned in right now is to just ask the brother to give a background of himself and then inshallah we can begin with uh, some specific questions about his area of interest inshallah. Inshallah. First, I'm very honored to be uh, on your TV, like I said. About that, I'm different. I don't really mind for the service of the mu'mineen like you and all the brothers and sisters Inshallah. all around the world and who are listening to this show specifically now. Regarding my background specifically in robotic engineering, you hear always that robotic engineering people are scary people who create someone uh, uh, that scare people and then he killed them and then later he steals their money and so on. Mm -hmm. And specifically, I made one like this robot uh, over here. It's not working currently now. Actually, you can see it. He's standing next to me you know, in my office. Because I always like to always add new features or new uh, programs that can make him more advanced. But regarding all the technology, we're very far from what we see from the TV. Mm -hmm. I think we're far like 20 to 25 years uh, from all this science fiction until we really have uh, very fast computers and very good programs. This is first. Second, Regarding what I presented before, you said, uh, truly it, it, is, uh, it is real. All the science is truly connected through Ahl al-Bayt. When, when Allah Azza wa Jal said, I created everything for Rasulullah, from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, we always just say it in Hadith al-Kisa, if you always hear it. Hadith al-Kisa specifically is the DNA for the universe. When I was very young, uh, like nine, ten years old, always I used to hear the shakes when I, uh, when I go to the masjid. They keep saying, Hadith of Kisa is very important to read. And honestly, I start, when I start reading it, I, I felt more like a story. What is really significant about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entering the house of Sayyidah Zahra and Imam Hassan Hussein, Imam Ali and Sayyidah Zahra will follow them. Later, when I start studying more the artificial intelligence, I said I, um, I found many connections between all the dots, the, between the logic, the reasoning, the philosophy, the wording. And when we start studying the physics, the E equal MC square for uh, Albert Einstein, mm -hmm. it is really significant theory because if there is something equal to energy, then it has to have a mass plus the speed of light. If we say, this, if we uh, adopt this to a hadith of Kisa, mm -hmm. we say that Allah Azza wa Jal start talking about the nur, nur, you know, the light of Ahl al Bayt. Sure. So if this light plus their mass in the existence has to equal energy, mm -hmm. specifically, and this has been proven by many, many, many scientists before, and I'm not bringing something new. So I start, I started connecting all the dots, and my first dot came up was Imam Ali Salam of uh, yeah, when I, I discovered Imam Ali, he is the pi of the circle because a three in Arabic, a three a pi equals 3.14. And three in written in Arabic is the letter Ain, you know, the Ali, when you start with Ali. Mm -hmm. And the one is Lam, and the four mm -hmm. is the Ya for Ali. So it's not just that. I, I made like two lectures. I dived uh, very deep into the quadrivium of Ahl al-Bayt, very deep in physics, and I showed that Imam Ali is the reflection of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sure. And from this reflection, I discovered that all the prophets were born from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Allah Azza wa Jal gave them the honor to hold a piece of their life, an image. Let me give you an example. For example, in a Isa name, Prophet Jesus, in Quran Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned him, Isa. And then I found out that the first letter of Isa is Ayn. And then the second and the third one are Yaseen. You see, look how beautiful it is. And Allah Azza wa Jalla in the Quran said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Yaseen, wal Quran al-Hakim. And we always refer to Rasulullah as Yaseen, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the most important prophet, they have Ya and Seen inside their name. And then the corner for Isa is the Ayn and the Alif. Is like Ali, you know, mm -hmm. Ali holding Muhammad inside. If we see, we see the the stories from the narration from Ahl al Bayt about how Jesus was Allah Azza wa Jal created him. I just want to briefly discuss that so I can reflect more. Allah Azza wa Jal, he 
created Adam at the very beginning, many people, they ask, who is the father of, of Isa? He has no father. But I'll tell you how Allah Azza wa Jal created. He created him from the same spirit that created Adam. We have a narration from uh, the Ahlul Bayt, salam Allah alayhim, one of whom, I'm just going to briefly discuss, say it and then continue. He said in uh, this, this uh, hadith that Allah Azza wa Jal, when he created Adam, he ordered Gabriel, uh, uh, angel Gabriel, to go down. And then he put like nafikh, you know, like he put all the spirit of Gabriel inside for Adam. When Adam immediately woke up, the first thing now when we see the babies, they wake up, first thing they sneeze, they do like, <clears throat> like this mm -hmm. for them to start crying. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla, He always symbolized this when you see a newborn. Sorry. SubhanAllah, it's all connected together. Sorry. And then this spirit that came outside Adam, since he didn't eat, he didn't have water, he didn't have anything, he fully have 100% spirit coming out, not just materialistic. Sure. So over here, uh, uh, Imam, Imam said that the angel came and they took this spirit that Adam, he spit outside because he was sneezing mm -hmm. at the very beginning. And they took it to very uh, to a holy place. Mm -hmm. And this place, where I discovered later, was called the sacred geometry where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was created. And he kept there between between Rasulullah and Jesus and Ali, over there between those two circles. Sure. Later, when Allah azza wa jal created uh, uh, Virgin Mary, mm -hmm. uh, Gabriel came in and he took this spirit and then he inserted inside sure. uh, inside uh, Mary. Why 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 this is happening? Why Allah azza wa jal created that because he want to show us in the very beginning how he created Ali from Muhammad. Sure. We see, we always claim that Allah Azza wa Jal created Ali because he's the bottom, he's the inside of Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So, Isa alayhi salam, he is the bottom of Adam. Why? Because if you open the Quran, the Holy Book of the Quran, you see all the verses, Adam with Isa. You see, if you see most of the verses, he, he mentioned Adam and immediately Isa next to him. Why? Because he's saying Adam is the Zahir that is the outside of, of the humanity and Isa is the inside. And in reality, in the Malakut, in the outside world, Allah Azza wa Jal created, uh, Muhammad is the father of the universe and Ali is the bottom of, the, of that universe. Allah. So he created Allah Azza wa Jal, Isa, Prophet Isa, for this reason. Mm -hmm. And that's why he kept him for to, that, to, that, to this time. Why? Because he want to conclude when, when Imam Mahdi, salam Allah alayhi, come, Isa who will be with him. Why? Because later Imam Ali, we have narration that he's gonna be here. So this is how we understand how we created. But if we, now if we're gonna open even the Bible, mm -hmm. I studied the Bible and I made many lectures about it. I didn't publish them yet, hopefully soon. In the Bible, Allah Azza wa Jal, let's say they, they take the name. Okay, but subhanAllah, they go always around the same circle. In the Bible, if you translate the name Jesus, to Arabic, it will be Yasua, you know, the name Yasua. Yeah. In the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal said Isa. Even Yasua is Yasin plus Ali. Mm -hmm. Even it's easier to understand that Isa, Muhammad and Ali at the same time. Masha'Allah, Masha'Allah. Yeah. So, but the, uh, 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 the, uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad uh, Jazakallah for that. Uh, you've just opened up so many questions and uh, and uh, it's fascinating what that what you're speaking about right now but we, um we just have a caller with us if we can take a caller with us inshallah assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam please brother please go ahead okay um brother just getting back to what you just uh, said now you, what, how you've begun um, explaining how uh, Hazrat Adam, the, uh, the the similarities of Hazrat Adam and Hazrat Isa, a lot of in information that you have said is indeed very fascinating. Now, what from my experience and my understanding that a lot of people, especially those who are watching and our Muslim brothers and sisters, go going back to what you have studied and uh, what your in, where your interest lies. What we find is not many people have studied such subjects and therefore whatever you have just spoken about indeed is it needs time to be digested, it needs time to think over and reflect because a lot of this for many people including myself is very new, very fascinating especially when we 
you know, you, you, most of your shows uh, or lectures have tried proving the significance uh, or the importance uh, or the existence of Ahlul Bayt through uh, your own particular research, especially in terms of um, your specialized background. Just taking one step backwards so our viewers also understand, because most of the time when the show is, uh, is shown uh, on Alabet TV, we, uh, people read the name the Quadrivium. If I can ask you, brother, to, to maybe simplify this term. For, m yeah. for many people, I, don't, I feel that they don't understand what, the, what this actually means. So, in, in, in lame terms, as I say, or in, in a very basic, simple terms for our viewers, if you could explain what is the meaning of, of the quadrivium of Ahlul Bayt, please. Yes, for sure. Yeah, that's a very important question, actually. And uh, after many lectures, few people ask me about this subject, this name specifically. Mm -hmm. And just listening to that name will give you all this description of what exactly I'm talking about. In reality, what is quadrivium? During the Greek time, uh, during all the philosophers and all those people, all those great people who created the philosophy and they started writing the logic and this, uh, the connection the, between the logic and the philosophy, the science, the numbers, the cosmology and all those things, all, all those great people at the Greek time, they discovered something very important. They said there's five platonic, platonic shapes that came from something called sacred geometry. Until this moment, you find sacred geometry everywhere. You find it in the old temples, you find it and even in a very old temple in Turkey, in Lebanon, in, in Egypt, all over the world. And the most significant thing of this is the flower. There's a flower with six circles in it only. Uh, those six circles will make the flower. In a connection of the six circle and the flower of the Hadith of Kisa, as I mentioned at the very beginning, those Specifically, Plato, you know, this, this philosopher, what did he say? He, he significantly said, he said, let's make those circles real. Let's make them like physically there. He started making them, and from all the dots inside, he found out that there's five platonic solids. Those five platonic solids, they, they have different shape. For example, the cube, they have like uh, inside the pyramid, and this pyramid has three sides, not four sides, and three different, uh, the all, all other. What's important about that, inside these, those ones, he found the cube. And then if you look at the Kaaba now, Allah Azza wa Jal, he chose this, this design for the Kaaba. And then from inside the Kaaba, he, who, he created Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. When he created Imam Ali, he said, not Mecca, he didn't mention it as name Mecca, he's mentioned it as Ba. Ba is the, at the very beginning. So even the Ba, between the difference between the Ba and the Meme, is a huge difference. Mecca is the physical form. Mm -hmm. Mecca is the form where it was created from Imam Ali from the sacred geometry. I, I have the, all this proof, and I'm not just mentioning this to, mm. to cut time. So where quadrivium comes from? The quadrivium, uh, Plato discovered that he said everything created over here, every all the creation made from those six circles. Why? Because they given us all the shapes, and those shapes. They, they exist everywhere. They exist inside the atom, they exist inside the molecules, they exist inside the water, they exist inside everywhere. So from that point, he said, let's make new science that can, relate, can connect all these things together. So what did he say? He said, the number is very important, the geometry is very important, the music is very important, the cosmology is very important. I, I mean here by the music, not the sounds and the so on, no. I mean the voices. And plus the cosmology. So all those together, he called them quadrivium. He said this name quadrivium. Smart. Why? Because everything was created from the quadrivium. How do how do we prove that? For example, number is connected to everything in the universe. The number that all the numbers has a density. They have atomic numbers. Even though you don't study this at a college or universities, but inshallah, I'm trying to present your ideas, you review your new idea in physics, I'm publishing two books, uh, hopefully Inshallah. they're going to come out to prove all these things, Inshallah. that everything exists in existence. Inshallah. So, yeah. Thank you very yeah. much indeed for that, brother. Inshallah, that would have uh, clearly defined uh, or explained the meaning of quadrivium. And, and like I mentioned, 
it's something for myself and our viewers to uh, to listen to your lectures over and over again because from my because uh, as you know when we met uh, back in uh, I think it's coming up to nearly a year now in last November when I was uh, in uh, Detroit uh, came to visit you now since then and 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 the, and the lectures that you have um, that we have shown here on Alabet TV we haven't uh, in fact not many people have come forward and um, try to ask questions about your topics that you have discussed. Now, first, I mean, this is gives it's a food for thought. It's 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 we're open for discussion here. This gives the opportunity to all those who are watching, who have uh, seen Muhammad Musa's lectures uh, uh, recorded on Alabet TV, to come forward and and ask the brother who has taken time out for yourselves to be here. Uh, you may have questions about his certain lectures uh, that you haven't understood. But this gives a brilliant opportunity for all of us to call in and, and really try to understand the angle that brother, the brother has uh, covered. Now, many of us, including myself, we like to uh, listen to lectures, history, etc. from our respected ulama uh, around the world. We see so many lectures during Muharram, month of Ramadan and various different lectures throughout the year. But, you know, I can say this live on al TV that the topics that Brother Muhammad Musa has covered, personally I haven't heard others speak about such information. Maybe because they haven't studied uh, the type of subjects brother Muhammad Musa has studied. But we have a young brother over in the States who has dedicated a lot of his years in lecturing, in covering uh, to prove the existence of Ahlul Bayt through physics, through science. And to be honest, I haven't come across hardly any brothers who've done this. And this is, I believe, an honor uh, for the Alabed TV to have such a brother uh, here with us today. Now, brother, one question I'd like to ask, um, you've, you specialized in artificial intelligence. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about the movies that have recently uh, been released with artificial intelligence, where they're, where they're trying to make robots uh, very clever, or, or you know things like uh, I'm not mentioning any uh, movie names or, uh, on TV here, but you're aware of some of the artificial intelligent movies uh, that are out there uh, that people are trying to make robots um, live side by side with human beings and even robots that can actually feel, etc. Question I like to ask you, brother, is what is the Islamic position? on artificial intelligence. If you could please uh, give an in-depth answer to this question. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's my pleasure to do so. Uh, regarding the subject of artificial intelligence, actually many people, like I mentioned before, they're scared from this subject, even even go inside and tackle it. In reality, the, this subject is going to be our future. For example, a couple of years from now, I was reading an article that there's a car is coming soon that it will drive, start to be driving itself. Or even all your cell phone will be automatically automated. I mean, it you will know what time you will wake up, what time, what do you like to drink, what do you like to make, and so on. So all this data they're gathering now is to make such intelligent software they can help you in life. The concept of or the philosophy of the artificial intelligence in religion is very beautiful and is very, uh, very beautiful and strong to talk about. Right. Which way that? Our brain is how, how small is it? It doesn't continue to contain any form of processors and so on. It can uh, process all this information specifically, for example, from the eye, 120 million uh, per second, bit per second, just the eye. This is if you want to connect this to the brain and all the function and all the feelings and emotions. And so on. Islam, in my view, now I'm talking. From my perspective, you always want to push towards these things. Why? Because 
I believe that none of the what we have from technology it has to be permitted by by Allah Azza wa for us to be starting in using it. Which, what do I mean by that? In the science of Arfan, we say that Allah Azza wa if you want something, He will send this information through angels around the globe. And anyone who trained his brain, the brain has to have a specific frequency. And science has proven that there's four types of frequency. I'm not going to talk about the frequency mm -hmm. of the brain now. But regarding who you are exactly, you will start capturing those frequency. Because sometimes people, they ask why Allah Azza wa Jal is giving all this science to the non-believers, not the believers. Because first of all, the non-believers are working very hard towards this thing. They really want to advance. While the believers, they just want to sit home and do nothing. They just want to depend on other people. I'm sorry to say that, but that's the reality. Now it's time to break all that and then to, to say that those the believers are the, uh, the people who are giving the advancement for science. Because artificial intelligence is depending so much on Islam that we will know from this subject that there is no spirit. Allah Azza wa Jal will not give spirit through the machine. Or the, the consciousness is a, is a subject that only made for human beings. It is not made for the machines. And I really work very close with a very advanced machine that it I really you you feel that artificial intelligence smart from the outside from the outside like for example when you start talking to it but the front inside is very 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 dumb it's all depend on just algorithm that we don't really depend on them mm -hmm. for example we have something called emotional intelligence the machines they don't have anything called emotion they can be programmed for emotion why? Because if you look at the brain, our brain is connected with, and this is very important now to say, I never mentioned this one before, but I will share it with you and all the viewers. If you look at our brains, our brains are made from neurons. Neurons are chemicals and at the same time plasma. Plasma is a fourth, fourth type of matter. We always study in physics that there are only three types of matter, but the reality is plasma is a fourth state of matter. And if you have a plasma in your brain, then you are connecting with something fourth dimensional and a fourth dimension. And that's very important. Science now is only connecting with processors and semiconductor and so on in the third dimension, which is Allah Azza wa has given us the permission to do so for the future, but not to be conscious, no, to measure the consciousness for the people. I believe one day we will come to this point. And specifically, this is, will be unlocked when Imam uh, Sahib al-Asr was a man will be open. I'm just saying a theory. I'm not really mm -hmm. saying something proven, no. Thank you very much indeed. Again, you know, just listening to your words uh, and trying to uh, absorb what you've just saying, it's, mashallah, very fascinating as I mentioned. You mentioned, there's a couple of points i like to, you know, just highlight from what you said. You said emotional intelligence. That is something that can be programmed uh, in robots or in machines for them to feel if you can no no they they can act like their feelings for example we can use some sensor those sensors they can pick up uh, their whatever property is for example sound sensor or heat sensor or if or we, for example we can adjust a camera to to see a someone's face and he, if he's smiling then it okay. will use specific geometry inside and then from that it will start giving orders for, to, for this machine to react while for example the human being he'll be able to laugh at the same time cry why because he have so many emotions that involving with uh, memories that involving with how the culture the religion mm -hmm. where exactly you are how tough i mean how tired how good you are how what you're feeling and so on so Thanks. all this together will show that allah Azza wa is still the best of creators Excellent. so he will show you he will show us that Okay, you wanna create human beings? Let's let 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 me give you the chance to try. And we've been doing so and so hundred years now, and the only thing we are discovering that how fascinating our brain is working. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible so, even to measure all the data in one second. Well. In uh, in California, they took someone and they said just think one thought, and then they put supercomputer connected with many many probes to his hands. Just one thought they wanna record it, and they measured. All this data in one second, that supercomputer crashed. This supercomputer. Wow. So, 
So comparing this to the human is zero. But Allah Azza wa Jal is still showing us in science that no one can be like me. That's why artificial intelligence is very important to prove mm -hmm. that Allah Azza wa Jal exists and in existence. Mm -hmm. And we are trying and struggling so much to just produce one act while look at your brain is so small and it's producing all this. Thank you very much, Brother Muhammad Musa. We will come back to what you're just speaking about. We do have a caller with us. Uh, thank you for waiting. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. My name is Zafar Yabusen Zaidi from Germany. Yes, Brother, please. I have a question on Muhammad Musa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Brother, brother Musa, uh, what, what is the status of roboters in the time of Imam Mahdi Akruz Zaman? And what, what will uh, Hazrat Isa salam do in the presence of Imam Mahdi salam? This is my question. Thank you. Okay, can, um, did Brother Musa g get the two questions? Yes, I got okay. them. Uh, yes, first, please go uh, ahead. Actually, there were two questions. Mm -hmm. The first question, bro the brother uh, asked about the robots. robots what yeah. will happen to the robots in the time of Imam Mahdi? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something surprise, to surprise you. Not just, uh, I have... I have many hadith and narration to back up what I'm saying. During Imam Mahdi's time, we're going to be so advanced that we'll be able to travel between dimensions, not between just here and the moon. Some people say that when Imam Mahdi is going to come, everything is going to be very, like, uh, like uh, no technology, no electricity, all these things, no internet, he's going to cut everything. In reality, no. If we study the life, of all the prophets when they came, they came with miracles that are bigger than their time. And when Imam Mahdi is going to come, he is, w with his message, is delivering all what the prophets want and all the awliya want. So he's connecting everything together. During his time, he's going to show us technology that in measurement percentage that we are now 1.5% of 25% what he's going to present. So he's going to be all his knowledge very advanced that we might depend on Imam Mahdi to make us better robots that can serve us in many things, mm -hmm. uh, can help us in many things we need in the future. This is the first question. I'm not. Uh, is it clear, or do you want me to clarify more? Um, uh, if you if you can go on to the second question, we will come back to that. Okay. The mm -hmm. second question regarding why, with the Prophet Jesus came, he's gonna come after, inshallah. It, because I told you, it's very important for Prophet Jesus to come. First of all, because Allah Azza wa Jal, when Prophet Jesus will come, he will immediately speak to the one-third of the of earth. Because now uh, the Christians are almost the two billion. And when they see the this person who are there worshipping, he's saying, I'm not God, and so on. You have one-third of earth are all coming Muslim. Why? Because when Imam Mahdi is going to come, He's not going to come in the, in the way you're thinking. He's going to kill everyone and it's going to make us go back to that uh, 2,000 years back old and so on. No. Imam Mahdi, when he's going to come, everything beautiful, everything nice by science, by peace, by everything is going to happen, except in the Middle East, because if you see all those people, they're killing different people. When Imam Mahdi is going to come, for sure, he's going to take the revenge. Well, that's why he say always, Yali Farat Hussein, when he's going to come. Thank at you. The, at the first word, he's going to be Yali uh, Sarat Hussein. Thank you very much indeed. Now, you know, we mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, there will be uh, science and robots, etc. Uh, uh, technology will be at its most, most peak um, uh, era or age. What will be the role of Zulfiqar, the, the sword, uh, during the time? Uh, because we believe that. Zulfiqar is with the 12th Imam. So what will be the role of this particular sword uh, with the 12th Imam during this time? For sure, that, uh, that's a very important question too. And I talked about this uh, in a big subject, but I want to simplify it mm -hmm. for, for us to understand. Studying Zulfiqar from the science point of view, before anything else, before saying Zulfiqar was sent from Allah and Gabriel, uh, Angel, and so on, all these things we know. The classics, you know, that we always hear about it. Mm -hmm. we, we say that if we're going to take the Zulfiqar from the scientific point of view, we see that no, none, uh, like the science of swords, now you can, for example, open YouTube and search for the science of swords. In the science of sword, they say the design of a sword should be in a way that it doesn't have like a Zulfiqar at the end, you see? 
it does why because anything that has this shape at the end it will make the user not it doesn't know how to use the sword anymore it will be very difficult to use it that's why none of after Imam Ali made a sword of like a Zulfiqar because they used to use it in uh, barrels and they failed to know how to use it. They failed. It, it was a bad sword, the design, from design point perspective. Mm -hmm. But what exactly Allah Azza wa wanted to tell us to, to Zulfiqar? He wanted to tell us that anything, same thing like the Surah Al-Kahf, if you open Zul Qarnayn, see Zul Qarnayn has a Zu and Zu over here. Mm -hmm. What does it mean Zul Qarnayn? Zul Qarnayn is that person with two horns, right? Mm -hmm. People think like that. In reality, two horns, what does it mean? This person, it doesn't have two horns, no. Zul Qarnayn is a person who traveled to two dimensions. The first dimension on the earth, and the second dimension is uh, parallel to our dimension. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that with Zul Qarnayn. For example, I will just give us a uh, uh, proof a little bit, mm -hmm. and then I'll, I'll move to the Zul Qarnayn. Mm -hmm. With uh, with, when he talked about the machine that Zul, Zul Qarnayn built, he said about something about copper and something about iron. Now, in the new technology, copper and iron, we use them to create magnetic fields, right? So when he, he Zul Fiqar, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Zul Qarnayn built that uh, place, he built it from those two materials and connected it to the power. This is mean he's, he's covering something that has electromagnetic field. Uh -huh. It's not covering a place because any place you cover it, some the other people, uh, Yad and Adam, they can dig to different place, or they can go up, or they can go create anything to go beyond it. Why they're still there now till this moment? Because uh, Zul Karnani was closing closing something called a wormhole. The wormhole is real. I can prove it through mathematics. But what, what's the connection between that and Zul Fiqar? Zul Fiqar, when you talk about Zul, this is mean two. Fiqar means two dimension. Why? Because Imam Ali was the Imam of Jinn and the Imam of Ins. Ins is us, humans. And Imam of Jinn is the covered people in different dimension. So the significance of Zul Fiqar is to show people that they don't believe in Imam Ali as Imam for, for Jinn and Ins, is to show that this is a clear proof that any person who know how to use this sword is an imam for jinn and ins at the same time. So Imam Mahdi, when he's going to come, he's going to fight jinn and ins at the same time. MashaAllah. Thank you very much indeed. A very in-depth um, explanation of this. And I truly am finding the, the words of Muhammad Musa very fascinating. And, um, and I'm sure our viewers are as well. Uh, again, a reminder to our viewers, this is your opportunity to call in to any questions that you may have um, uh, for Muhammad Musa, his background. Um, I mean, one, one of the questions that our viewers may have is, where is this brother getting all this information from? In fact, even when I started watching the lectures of this brother uh, on YouTube, that was the first question. It was something totally new to me, something completely unique. And the question that kept coming to my mind is that where is all this information coming from? Because year in, year out, months in, months out, we hear the same lectures over and over again about the lives, about their history of the Ahlul Bayt, alaymussalam. But when you hear something new, as human beings, uh, we tend to reject and especially if, if you have no knowledge of something or something is completely brand new, you, you tend to either keep away or have your uh, doubts about such things. And I'm sure, in fact, this channel here is uh, for our viewers to uh, get rid of such misconceptions or misunderstanding or these doubts that are sometimes created in our minds. Hence, why the live show today with our dear brother Muhammad Musa. Any doubts that you may have about what our brother is saying, uh, inshallah, I am very much sure he has his, he's done his research, he's done his background, he has the background knowledge uh, on this matter. And inshallah, um, we do hope our viewers are benefiting from what the brother is saying. Musa uh, Muhammad, um, coming back to um, 
to, to what you have been saying now, I like to, uh, I mean, there's a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. Now, the, just going back to some of the lectures that you have um, uh, sent us and that we have played uh, on Elabet TV, one of the very first lectures that we played was uh, the dimensions of Rasulullah. Uh, one of the very first, and we have many different uh, other lectures by you. Just in a nutshell, briefly, if you could just uh, give us a background of this lecture. Those who have missed it, and we will be repeating the shows of Muhammad Musa uh, on, on TV. But just in a few words, just give us the background of this uh, lecture that we showed of the dim dimensions of Rasulullah, please. Yeah, sure. First, uh, I want to just answer the question uh, many people, they asked at the beginning, after, before asking this question, he said, where do you get all this from? When they asked Newton, he said, how did you discover gravity? He said, you know, the story of the apple. In reality, the historian, some historian, they were close to that place. He said, they said, there's nothing, no such thing called apple fell down on the head of Newton and then suddenly discovered gravity. In reality, if there's an apple fell down and a Newton had, he will eat it. He will clean it and eat it. That's it. He cannot discover gravity because of that. In reality, if you study all the science that came from Ahlul Bayt at that time, I have old books that start talking, for example, the, the brothers of Safa, there you see those, they have few letters, many thousands of letters together. They start talking about it. And this book is 14, almost 1300 years old. And some of those people, they were used to be a companion for um, imams, for example, Imam Sadiq or Imam al or so on. They get all their knowledge from those imams. And then they talk in the, their letters about something called gravity. But they didn't call it gravity. They call it something called jadid in Arabic. So all this science during Newton time was migrating from the Middle East since there was too many wars like now, like ever. They're migrating to the that place when the French Revolution was started. And all this science will start translating this science from this place to that place. So Noon, he was sitting and reading all this information, and he started reading about something called Jezeb, you know, something will go down. And then he started realizing there's something called really gravity. And then he started making a few research and so on and so on and so on. And at the very end, he put the first and the second law of gravity and the third law, and later, Einstein came and he proved it wrong. But the reality of science is like no one can get you new science directly. I cannot claim that all the science is mine. No. I have to read something from the, the Holy Book of Quran or from the sacred geometry or so on. And I have an, always in my mind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is my passion. He is my love. I, I dedicate my everything for him. So when I really dedicate this for him, I, everything I read it always refer to him. So that's why you connect all the dots. This is how I get the information. I get it from everywhere and from all the sciences because everything is from him. So everything has to relate to it. It's very simple. It's not hard. About the second question, I'm sorry. And I sorry, promise. if if I yeah. can just, uh, before you answer the, uh, the the brief explanation of dimension of Rasulullah, for what you've said, the, the information that you've taken and how you've connected everything together, how have, uh, f for example, the lectures that you have um, given where you are in the United States, what has the reactions been of individuals or communities out where you are, where you've given lectures? What, have there been mixed, um, uh, the, uh, the mixed uh, th thinkings and, and, and reactions and opinions? How have they uh, come across? How have you taken their... Uh, words. First of all, the, uh, with this question, it will tackle some of my emotions mm -hmm. because it's very a lot of emotional. Why? Mm -hmm. Because at the beginning, when I start giving all these lectures, some of the ulama, deen, or for the deen ulama, for the religion, mm -hmm. they really start to be afraid. They said, "What kind of knowledge you presented? We never heard about such things." Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking about the sacred geometry and relating this to Ahlul Bayt and so on. And one of the ulama, he said, I can accuse you simply that you are Masonic or so on. And he know me, you know, he started yeah. laughing. He said, I can accuse you of that. How, how can you prove it's not? Well, I spent all, for, I have on YouTube 
more than 100 in Arabic, 100 lectures in Arabic, Inshallah. and uh, 50 in English. And every person who passed by this lecture, he will 100% be sure that what I'm talking about is 100% science related to religion. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to present new ideology. For example, I will give you an, an example. Now, let's say w with whatever happened with the United States, they recently they said, you know, two, two from, the, from the same sex can be married together. Mm -hmm. Now, if we bring religion, the classic religion, then we will say that Allah Azza wa Jal, He said this act is wrong. Christianity, they said this act is wrong. Mm -hmm. Judaism, so on, and all their religions. How can you prove to them this act is wrong? Nobody can prove anything because they don't really believe in religion. Mm -hmm. So such people, some of them they do, but let's say they don't believe in religion. So here, whatever I presented, I can show you that man marrying a man is bad mm -hmm. from the sacred geometry. Woman marrying a woman is bad from the sacred geometry. Oh, sure. Why a man is marrying four from the sacred geometry? Mm -hmm. You see, I'm not using anything from the narration. I can relate that to narration because they're there for us. Sure. Ahl al-Bayt want us to discover that. But when I start presenting that, I, I found out that from the youth, many people from the youth start acting positive about it. Sure. But like you said, it's hard to understand. People it's find it hard. Why? Because it's connecting to science, and science is hard. But reality is, if we, we say that during Imam Mahdi time or before his time, mm -hmm. And some of the brains going to be completed, 100%. Now we use only 9%, 10% of the brain. We have narration that said, during this time, time of the zuhur of Imam Mahdi, some brain they have to complete it. Why? Because when Imam Mahdi is going to come, he's going to start talking to people, right? If people, some people before him didn't, didn't say that, didn't talk about this knowledge, then when Imam Mahdi is going to be giving us that, hard things, how are they going to understand it? We have to start by this knowledge. Oh, oh. Why? Because with this knowledge is, I don't have, for example, sitting me debating, let's say, with a Sunni brother. Mm -hmm. I don't have to mention that the books, because what you see now on TV, you see some uh, uh, sheikh, he has like 10 books next to him, and then on the other side, other sheikh has 10 books next to him, and then they're trying to prove narration. Mm -hmm. And you got no place there. With this science, I don't talk about books, I don't talk about narration. I say, Rasulullah is so and so, and this is the theory. And can someone prove me wrong? Uh, this is Imam Ali in physics. Can someone prove me wrong? I personally did a few debates with different brothers, even from Christian world. And they were really fascinated. They said, we don't really know how to reply. Mm -hmm. So they went to their, to, their, uh, to their father or so on, and they asked him about all this knowledge. But those people, they always say, stay away from those people. They keep talking to you about science and so mm -hmm. on. We don't believe in science. Science is not relating to religion. Inshallah. In reality, science, in the, in the Holy Quran, He said, Allah Azza wa Jal, The people who, who believe in Allah, and then they, they get more and more and more in knowledge. Inshallah. So Allah Azza wa Jal, in the Yawm al Qiyamah, the judgment day, He's going to judge us based on that. He will say, do you believe on me? And me as God? And then I'll say, yes, I do. He'll say, okay, you have the heaven. Okay, you can enter the heaven. What is the type of your knowledge? I'll say so and so and so and so. He knows. Mm -hmm. And then he will bring me to the seven layer of heaven. You see, oh. everyone who believe, anyone who believe in Allah, he's, he got the heaven. That's it. But Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, The people who acquire knowledge are in levels. So the more you have level, the more you have education, the more Allah Azza wa Jal will take you. Mm -hmm. And That's just, I, I just like to just stop you there. And you have a saying, a very famous saying of the eighth Imam alayhi wa salam, um, where he said that um, uh, you know that you you become uh, you, uh, successful if you say La ilaha illallah, and I am one of those conditions. Exactly. So when you mention that if anyone believes in Allah, he'll get in heaven, does yeah. that mean, of course, with this being uh, I, 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 one of the conditions that that you have to believe the wilaya of the eight Imam, for example, in this concept. So, yeah, sure. how would you how would you relate this? Yeah, for sure. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I came from the Middle East, and in the Middle East, there's ninety percent of them. We have, let's say, seven hundred million people over there. Six hundred million, they don't read and write. 
They have no education. They don't really know anything. So they follow other people. There are Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned that by the Mustadafin of Allah in the in the Holy Book of Quran. So my opinion in that Allah Azza wa Jalla, when you ask those people, I met with many of them. I'll tell them, do you love Ahl al Bayt? They will say, we love Ahl al Bayt so much. The first question will be, can you name them? Mm-hmm. And they will sit and smile. They will say, oh, Imam Ali, Hassan Hussein, maybe Fatima, I'm not sure. And mm-hmm. they stop. But in reality, if we really teach them, we start teaching them, they will fall in love with Ahl al Bayt, for sure, 100%. So those people are the most Mustadafin. But the other people who really refuse Ahl al Bayt, and they know them, and they know what they presented, mm-hmm. that's what we call Nawasid, the people who are the Ada of Ahl al Bayt, the enemy of Ahl al Bayt. Mm-hmm. So over here, we have to give them the Hujjah. And Hujjah, my Hujjah is not through the narration again. I have to show them that with La ilaha illallah has to come Muhammad Rasulullah. How did I prove that? From Qulhu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad. We read it every single day in the Holy Quran. Who can define what is Ahad? Now if you open all the books, no one defined who is Ahad. Who can define who is Samad? No one defined who is Samad. They say Samad means that everyone needs Allah. And Ahad is, is oneness, like one. In reality, what Allah Azza wa Jalla is talking about over here, He said, there is something that can bring you to Ahad. What is it? It's Ahmad. You see? Well, that's why He named him Ahmad. Why? Because between the name Ahmad and Ahad, only Meme in the middle. Wow. Meme is what? Is the creation, is the circle that I'm talking about. Wow. So if you want to know who is Allah, it has to go through Ahmad. Wow. It has to go through Muhammad. And who, how you gonna go through Muhammad has to go through Ali because he is the door of Muhammad. Subhanallah. And if you, how you gonna go now to us, mm-hmm. it has to go through Imam Sahab al-Asr wa Zaman, relating to all Imams, to Imam Ali, to Rasulullah. This is the only way. Brother Muhammad Musa, 31 years old, who specialized in robotic engineering and artificial intelligence. He's been lecturing for since 2013 with over 9 million clicks and 32,000 followers, alhamdulillah. He has many lectures in the language of Arabic and the language of English on YouTube. Muhammad Musa has been uh, lecturing for some time and you have seen his different lectures on El Abed Studios uh, that have been shown here. Today gives you the, the, the opportunity to call in with any questions that you may have about his background, about the information that he has tried to share with the masses. I am proud and honoured to be here speaking to Muhammad Musa live from the United States. Brother, just going back to uh, one of the questions, you mentioned how a lot of people find it difficult to understand or to comprehend what you have to tell them, what you want to share. Now, of course, you have specialized in this area of uh, artificial intelligence, science, physics, etc. But for many people, it is either a boring subject, a subject that they haven't come close to, or they've never really thought about the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam through the light of science, through the light of physics or artificial intelligence, etc. How The question I have uh, for you, brother, is how do you try to simplify your lectures, your topics to the masses, to people like myself, to people that have a youth around the world who are listening to you? How do you try to simplify science or the topics that you try sharing with them yeah it's my honor first to be here again Inshallah. for your question for sure what i'm presenting is it's kind of hard some people they're finding this even very complex to understand for me to prove a point i have to open many different points to talk about them for example one of my uh, people that he was listening a lecture he just got a pen and paper and he started to write notes Inshallah. Instead of writing notes, he said, I was estimating you're giving me 16 information every one minute for me to grasp. And that's too much information. For example, for you to prove one question, you have to give 16 info in one minute. And that's too much. Mm -hmm. I'm unable to really understand what you're saying. 
And from that point, I really realized that some of the people really need a certain type of certification. And uh, recently, I started by using the graphics. I'm uh, now dealing with a person. Now he started to making uh, graphics or trying to do presentations. And with this presentation, I'm able to show a person what I'm really talking about. Mashallah. Because, because uh, in this, uh, a person who is listening to someone for sure, uh, studies has proven that the best person can listen up to nine minutes best and after that he will start be really not here anymore <clears throat> now i really present my lecture in a simpler form some people will really understand and but i will keep the complex one for the real proof i mean some people they really ask for a hard proof to sh to talk about this subject for example about isa rasulullah uh, imam ali or so on and I really, I'm really adopting to this way now. So soon I'm going to present a simpler lecture with graphics, but I'll continue parallel with a hard lecture, complex one, the people who really get to my way of giving. Mashallah. And it will always stay there as a proof for the hard science, hardcore science. Mashallah. Thank you very much indeed. And as, as you mentioned, I think that will be a an excellent and a very effective way, especially to gauge, uh, engage this uh, the younger uh, crowd, the youth, uh, brothers, sisters, and especially if we, <clears throat> as you've mentioned, you know, trying to use illustrations uh, to prove a point would be a very good way to simplify our lectures. Um, and of course, we've got technology around us that we can use uh, to show a point, to make something clear. And as you mentioned, that is something that we would like to see, uh, especially the team here in Alabed, uh, your future, which will come to uh, the, some of the different, uh, the upcoming lectures that you will be um, presenting for Alabed TV. Uh, and to especially we would like to uh, engage the younger youth uh, today uh, so that your points are coming across to them so they can understand uh, what Muhammad Musa is actually trying to explain and of course when you when you when you start to understand and put the puzzles together you appreciate uh, more from from your topics and then you're keen to learn and look forward to more lectures uh, so of course uh, that will be something that we look forward to <clears throat> now Muhammad Musa have you traveled anywhere um, where uh, I mean once uh, again I like to ask you the different reactions you received from different communities etc uh, some of course may have been uh, constructive criticism some people may not have approved etc so how have you dealt with this in terms of um, uh, you know what type of audience are you are you capturing now is it the younger youth that you're looking forward to, uh, that you're working on or is it the elders of the communities or are they the, is it the, the scholars of the community well uh, n now I'm trying to reach the youth first it's my main focus because i believe the youth now is taking all this information from their schools all all their physics books their mathematics and so on all these sciences are there so for example when they go start learning about all this numbering system and so on with the mathematics they will be able to relate that to what i'm really talking about i will go parallel with all what they're taking in a simpler way at the same time, I'll continue with the old story because I, I believe now after two years, I've seen many people, they come a long trip, long way to be to be here, mm. to understand all these things. Many, many of them, they keep debating with different people about how important this knowledge is. <clears throat> and and it will really continue. I'm, I'm really hoping to reach everywhere. For example, one time I was visiting different area, a uh, different masjid in uh, different state in the United States and I was really surprised surprised by two people they came up and pushed me and I said we really enjoy your lecture and we really need all these lectures and we hope one day you come here to those university to start really give uh, academic lectures about sure. that because sure. we really need all these things mm -hmm. so my main focus now in a youth in a, the simpler way and the other way the universities to be honest I'm sorry to say that over here all our resources I mean, like massages or so on, 
are kept for the people who has access to it. Mm -hmm. It's very hard now to ask, for example, anyone for me to give lectures inside because they're really afraid of what I'm really giving. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they don't understand what I'm giving. Imam Ali says, Al insan adu ma yajhal. The person is the enemy of what he doesn't know. I mean, in a simple mm -hmm. translation. Mm -hmm. And people, I mean, th those people, they really fear that I'm really doing something different than what I'm proving that those people exist in science. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I can give many examples about that. But for example, one time, one of the ulama I was talking to, and I told him, can you prove to me that hijab is important? And he said, yeah, Allah Azza wa Jal said so and so. I said, no, this today I'm going to be an evil advocate whatever they say. I say, I see, expect me that a person who doesn't believe in God. I'm going to ask you this question. How can you prove the hijab is is important? How can you prove it? You have to have a hijab for you. How do you prove it for me? And he, he simply said, I cannot. I said, yeah, because this is what I'm trying to present. If you look, for example, I'm going to give this example. It's sure. very simple. Mm -hmm. In mathematics, we have hijab too. Surprisingly, we have hijab. Mashallah. And many times I give this example. They said, how did you discover this hijab? I say, from Ahl al-Kisa again. And when Allah Azza wa mentioned Ahl al-Kisa, the people of the hijab, if you want to translate that. Mm -hmm. What does it mean, the people of the hijab? We have uh, a physics, uh, they, in, they say, rule, a physics rule that say, uh, one over square root of five mm -hmm. is equal to the golden ratio, right? Mm -hmm. So, what is the golden ratio? It's 1 over square root of 5. Square root of 5, what is it exactly? It's 5 people under that, under the kisa, mm -hmm. you see? So the hijab in mathematics is what? It's the square root. Oh, you sure. see, the square root, when you put it for a number, this is mean this number is feminine, it's not masculine. Mm -hmm. so in a normal form, in a, in a, in a higher form, mm -hmm. it is for man and woman. Because a man has a hijab and a woman has a hijab too. But this hijab is open to one side, it's not to the second side. Same way you write the square root. Mm -hmm. So this is how what I'm trying to present. Inshallah, I'll, I'll, I'll be targeting more those people and I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping through your channel to find ulama to really study what I'm saying. Inshallah. Because because I really wanna want them to know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. and I really want them to debate, debate me if they feel that I'm doing something wrong. Inshallah. You see, because it is important for me to know that I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. I always review, uh, revise my information. I always do everything I can to present the 100% information. Mashallah. And but, I think, I think, brother yeah. Muhammad, this is the op this is obviously gives you the opportunity, and and hence the reason why it was necessary to have a live show with you, because those uh, people, uh, individuals who have some. Uh, maybe background to physics or mathematics or uh, artificial intelligence etc this is give them the opportunities I mean I'm sure those who sat and watched your programs uh, and said okay it'd be interesting to speak to this brother face to face or ask him some question once again I'll emphasize to those who are watching this is your opportunity to call in uh, if if you don't want to call in, text in your questions for the brother. Uh, inshallah, this is will be first on many live programs with uh, Muhammad Musa uh, about his topics, about his uh, field of interest. And Ahl Abed TV is for everybody. It gives the opportunity to those uh, who have these uh, the, the desire to learn, uh, to acquire knowledge. And we hope, inshallah, one day as well, um, Brother Muhammad Musa is able to come to United Kingdom. He's always welcome. Uh, that's the first, uh, you know, the invitation is from al TV first and foremost, uh, for the brother to come here and to, to, to present his ideas. Um, once again, you know, I, I keep using the word lecture. I think lecture, the word itself is kind of outdated. Uh, here, the brother is presenting his ideas, he's sharing his knowledge um, with the masses, with the youth is in particular. Therefore, those Islamic centers and individuals and communities that are watching today um, would be encouraged to, inshallah, when the brother does come eventually to this country uh, to 
invite him to your Islamic centers and to have these uh, debates, discussions uh, for the enrichment or the knowledge uh, for our youth, inshallah. And Muhammad Musa will take a caller with us. Uh, we have a caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam, brother. Please go ahead. Um, just want to ask um, Brother Muhammad Musa a question. I've yes. heard one of his lectures before on the importance of numbers within Islam. Okay. And uh, just wanted him to elaborate. It was really interesting, but it was quite a long time ago I heard it. I just wanted to elaborate on the importance but, oh. of the like the important numbers we have within Shia Islam. For example, okay. 5, 12, 14. Mm -hmm. And specifically... Um, maybe why is the 12th number, like the 12th Imam, Allah, mm -hmm. Faraja, is hidden? Mm -hmm. And um, just the importance of that, please. Jazakallah. Thank you very much indeed for your question, brother. Brother Musa, did you uh, get the question? Would you like me to repeat? Yeah, well, uh, I sorry. will really answer. Um, I will have to, yeah. Sorry, brother Muhammad, if you can take the next call, if that's okay, sure. and then we'll come back to the question. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullah. Please, brother, I'm please go ahead. From, uh, yeah, I'm calling from Edmonton, Canada. Okay. Uh, my name is Atta Abbas. Atta Abbas. Yes, brother, please um, go ahead. Yeah, I'm uh, very interested to know about uh, uh, Sayyid Muhammad Musa. This is the first time I'm hearing his name. Mm -hmm. And I tried to search on uh, Google, but I didn't find any lecture or anything. Okay. So if he has uh, his um, email address or uh, website or where we can find his lectures, mm -hmm. Because I'm principal in one of the Sunday school here, Mashallah. and I would like to uh, know the um, the new ways of teaching the students. As he was just referring about hijab, Mashallah. that he's telling hijab in a different way. Mm -hmm. Not uh, only Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says to do hijab, and then everybody is doing hijab. Mm -hmm. But he is correct that uh, nowadays, especially in North America and in America, mm -hmm. we have we have to have a logic to explain uh, everything. Mashallah. So if uh, I can have his email address or his website so we can have benefit for his lecture. In inshallah, inshallah, we'll Thank do. You. Thank you very much indeed. And just before we get to uh, Muhammad Musa, in fact, I also had um, uh, slight difficulty in finding the brothers' uh, lectures on YouTube. Uh, I think it's the name, the way the name is spelt, you will definitely find them. and. We will, once again, um, just before coming to Muhammad Musa is, we will uh, send a link, in fact, um, in, in the next, uh, uh, whenever we show the show of Quadrivium of Ahlul Bayt, we will include a link to the brother's lectures um, uh, with his direct link to all his Arabic, including English lectures as well. So those who are interested, um, Musa, just go, uh, as you know, brother from Canada called and he obviously was interested in some of the ways that you have explained. Please go ahead. Yes. Yes, I will, I will answer to those two questions. The yes. first, first thing I'll answer to the second one. Okay. The brother can find me under the name of Servant Muhammad Musa. Servant, uh, just like uh, because I want to be a servant for the meaning. That's why I put my first name. Inshallah. Yeah. And the, the, my name is spelled by M O H. A M E D. I want to make it simpler, not double M or so on. <laughs> and then M O U S S A, because immediately when you start writing it on YouTube, it will bring it. Okay. But you have to put Servant Muhammad Musa. Servant Muhammad Musa. Nah, yes. And uh, the channel called uh, Iliyun, Kanat Iliyun. Okay. And uh, 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 there's uh, those who are watching, you can see the name written on the bottom of the screen, exactly yeah. how it's spelled. Again, as the brother mentioned, put Servant Muhammad Musa and you will yeah. be able to get his lectures on uh, YouTube. Uh, please go ahead with the first question about the importance of numbers. Yes, uh, the brother mentioned something very important. I don't accept what he didn't have for his, his question because I want to correct it for him. Mm -hmm. The importance of numbers in Ahlul Bayt are from 0 to 9. We have nothing after number 9. I'll, sh I'll tell you why. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, when He created Ahlul Kisa, you know, He created them from 1 to 5. From 1 to 5. And then with Sayyid al Zahra, alayhi salam, she became the 1, and then from 1 to 9. Back. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran, in the book of Quran, He said, 
ويحمل عرش ربك يومئذ ثمانية. Eight things will carry the throne of Allah عز وجل. Who, what is the throne of Allah عز وجل? Is Rasulullah. Is Rasulullah the throne of Allah عز وجل. I have many proof. I have many proof of that. So when Imam said, and this is very important narration, I'm telling you, all the narration for all Ahl al-Bayt are very important, connected uh, science. He said, all the Imams are shuhud witnesses for all the and a Sayyida Zahra is our witness. Subhanallah. She's the witness. She's she we go to the Sayyida Zahra to be our witness. But not Imam Hassan, not Imam Hussein, not Imam Ali, not Rasulullah. Why? Because after those at the at the end of the Hadith al Kisa, and I'm gonna ask an important question the Hadith al Kisa, you always read it. Why Imam Hassan came to the Kisa with Rasulullah before Imam Ali? That's a very important question to think about. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it to the people to think about. So Imam Hassan came the second, Imam Hussein third, Imam Ali fourth, because that's why you have four, you see Kaaba, cube, four. That's why Imam Ali was number four. But it's a secret. It's a main secret. If you know, if you understand why Imam Ali came the fourth, not the second, you'll understand what is the secret of Sayyidah Zahra. But you can I can cheat a little bit and tell you that Sayyidah Zahra is the main witness of the rest of the Imams, the nine Imams, rest of them. That's how Allah Azza wa Jal created zero to nine. This is the creation. The number system is made because of Ahl al Kisa. So Imam Mahdi is an ad for different numbers, one and two. Why? One is a singular number, two is, is a subject of everything in life. For example, uh, water has two things together. The main hydrogen has one, and inside it two uh, different things. Mm -hmm. So everything's connected to these numbers. So when when Allah Azza wa Jal is going to send Imam Mahdi, he has to have a number twelve. But number twelve is construction between one and two at the same time. Mashallah. See, that, that's that's the importance of number. Yeah, I agree. And I'll tell you something. All numbers are important. But the most important numbers and the main fathers of the numbers are zero to nine. That's it. We have nothing else after that. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I mean, I'm sure Brother Musa, uh, Muhammad Musa can go in depth. We don't have much time. We have uh, many more questions to get through. Uh, but thank you for clarifying that, uh, Muhammad. <laughs> Um, Muhammad, we've got a couple of text messages coming through now. Um, one of them is, um, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Please, can you explain if there is any formula within science that explains love and its relation to the Ahlul Bayt, salam, or how do you explain the concept of love through science and its relation to Ahlul Bayt? Yeah, yeah, for sure, there is an explanation. Mm -hmm. uh, all the reality of every, any question, rely, we can ask the number this question. We have science called al -Jifr. This science called al -Jifr. And the, the main, this science only with Imam Ali, salamu alayhi. But from this, Imams, they taught us a little bit, like a pieces for us to make a construction. Mm -hmm. If you want to ask something about love, what's the important and where we can find it exactly? The, the love is with the numbers, with the numbers of, I mean, the letters of the Arabic, letter of love. Mm -hmm. In Arabic, we write love by two letters only. We call it Ha and Ba. Mm -hmm. Ha is uh, connected together, we call it Hub. Mm -hmm. Love is Hub in Arabic. Okay. And because this letter, those those letters are Allah Azza wa revealed them by Arabic, so they have to have a foundation in a sacred geometry. I, I'll, I'll just say it easily. I don't want to go deeper. Mm -hmm. the, the Ba is what the Ba? The ba I just mentioned it, if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if Allah azza wa jal mentioned Rasulullah as in the Quran, the Holy Quran is Noon. Noon wal qalam wa ma yasturun. Right? Noon wal qalam. Noon is one of the name of Rasulullah. So if Noon in Arabic is like a half a circle and one dot on top, mm -hmm. this is Rasulullah. So what will be the bottom of Rasulullah? We will take this dot and then we we'll put it down. It will mm -hmm. be back. Mm -hmm. That's why Imam Ali said, all the Quran is in Surah Al-Fatiha. Mm -hmm. And all the Surah Al-Fatiha, the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha is in Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Mm -hmm. And all Bismillah Rahman Rahim, the meaning of it is inside the back. And I am the dot under that. Imam Ali said that. So the back is Imam Ali. And the 
Ha' at the beginning is what made Hassan and Hussein. Right. Ha' is Hassan, and the other Ha' is Hussein. So Hub in Arabic, we write it Ha' with something we call Shadda. Shadda is two letters at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we have two Ha' and one Ba. Hub, love, is me, what does it mean? Mean two, one Hassan, one Hussein, and one Imam Ali. Mm -hmm. This is the ultimate love for Rasulullah. That's mm -hmm. why Allah Azza wa Jal created this word as love. MashaAllah. Thank you very much indeed for once again for that beautiful explanation. Next question, uh, uh, Brother Muhammad, is regarding uh, the 313 uh, companions of the Tawf Imam. Uh, the question is, do the 313 companions of the Imam exist now or do they know, uh, do they know who they are? Yeah, from, from the science of Arafat, not from my science. Uh, the Arafat said, you see the Arafat, what do I mean by Arafat? The people who got so close to Allah that he showed them their secret, mm -hmm. his secret. Yeah, they said, yeah, they all in, in existence now, the all of them, and they know themselves now, yes, all of them. And they're working toward their appearing of Imam Mahdi. Sure. They're doing their work now, yes. Okay. Some of them, their Imam, Imams, he's teaching them directly, or he's teaching them with, Different different ways, mm -hmm. and some of them they know him directly, and they're working to what he's doing. That. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Muhammad Musa. Next question we've uh, got here. Assalamu alaikum. Can you please give scientific evidence about the salah being three or five times a day? Yes. Yes, for sure. The, uh, you mean you want science, or you want? Uh, it's what, what basically, the question says scientific evidence about the yeah. Salah, you know, being three or five times a day? Yes, I, I mentioned it from the Holy Quran and then mm -hmm. I relate to the science. Please. That's a, that's a very deep subject, but I'm going to answer it. Uh, very yes, simply. please, yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. Allah Azza wa when He mentioned the Salah in the Holy Book, mentioned it three times in the, in the Holy Book. Why? Because He's telling you about the Salah can be done in this time. He's not talking about what's done in this time. Mm -hmm. But if you know what is exactly the Salah, Representing, for example, Salat al at the, in the morning prayer, a white has only two rikahs, not doesn't have four. Why? Because two rikah does it, it does mean as a full witness of what of the sun is gonna come after. We refer always to the sun as Prophet Muhammad. So we, he doesn't need two more rikah after uh, in, a, in, a, in a morning prayer. That's why the morning prayer is the most important prayer. It's very important. When you begin your day by this prayer, Allah Azza wa Jal will, will show you who is truly Rasulullah. The Fajr means Rasulullah. It is Rasulullah. The Zuhr, why Zuhr? In Arabic, Zuhr called something behind over here. Something, for example, over here is when you shake or see it, it's in the front. In the back, we call it Zuhr. Okay? In the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned Imam Ali as Zahir Rasulullah. Zahir Rasulullah is the helper of Rasulullah. So Zuhr, we do it because of Imam Ali. Mm -hmm. You see, Asr, if we bring the wording, the Asr is Ali, Zahir Muhammad. Yani, Ali is the son of son of law of Muhammad. You see, Ali, Zahir Rasul. Mm -hmm. yeah, that referring to what? To Sayyidah Zahra. That's why in the, all the ulama say always, Wal Asr in the insan al khus illa ladina amanu wa amanu salihat. This surah referring to Sayyidah Zahra. She was the first martyr for the sake of Wilaya. That's why in the Asr saying it's talking about Rasulullah Zahra. Mm -hmm. It's talking about the patient and it's talking about what for the Wilaya. And Al Maghrib, only three rikahs. Why? Because for the Imam, for the Imam Hassan. Why? Because nobody knows Imam Hassan much. Nobody knows him. Mm -hmm. We always, we really, we, I don't know what to say because. We always talk about only the Karbala and so on, but I always say we have to make three days before the start of Ashura, specifically for Imam Hassan, Subhan to show what exactly Imam Hassan did for Imam Hassan. That's Allah, why Subhan we have Allah. only three rikahs. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, Isha refer to Karbala, even same rhythm, Isha, Karbala, it's for Imam Hussein. And after that, we have what long night. With this night, we have all the Imam, and then we go back to the Wal Fajr, Mm -hmm. Mashallah, thank you very much. That 
it's amazing to hear such words and, and from a, such a different angle because you do not hear this every day uh, and it's mashallah very in, in fact very enjoyable sitting here to listen to you and i'm sure all our viewers are uh, taking much benefit from your words um next um question come through is regarding um please can you tell me when it says in the quran uh, to maintain middle prayers please can you explain if um, I don't have a scientific back please can you tell me when it says in the quran uh, maintain middle prayers uh, please can you explain if if the person who's just text in if they can maybe slightly elaborate or kindly explain uh, the question that they've sent so we can um, ask muhammad musa muhammad musa you know the, what you what we've just been talking about um a lot of like you mentioned in in that one minute or in in a few minutes that you speak about there's so many questions that come out that you you know there's so many things to write down to, to just catch up with um what you're trying to say uh, and it's all mashallah very enlightening uh, for myself and also our viewers just bringing you back to uh, the the early day lectures that we showed here from the Alabed studios uh, coming back to the dimension of Rasulullah that was one of your early lectures that we played here on Alabed TV uh, again if you could please briefly mention um, what this lecture was about and what do you actually mean by the dimension of Rasulullah yeah we always understand Rasulullah وسلم, as a person with two hands and two legs and one hand and this is the reality but if you always read, I'm talking briefly now, I want to move fast, Please. that's why. And briefly, Allah Azza wa Jal, he always referring to Rasulullah as either Ahmad, the name of Ahmad or Muhammad. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has 10 names, 10 other names in the Holy Book of Quran. But the importance of Muhammad is to show you that there is someone, there is a beautiful spirit, and this spirit it doesn't have edges. We always, for example, when we... I, I talk up to, to people, especially there's an ayah that says that Jewish said to the Rasul that the hand of Allah is cheap. And Allah Azza wa Jal said, no, his two hands are wide open. In the Holy Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that the Jewish said uh, the hand of God is, is closed, cheap. Mm -hmm. in, the meaning, in the meaning, I'm not saying the right translation, I'm just saying the meaning. And Allah Azza wa Jal replied as what? as his both hands are open. So the Jewish is talking about one hand, and Allah Azza wa Jalla said both hands are open. Why? Because he's trying to tell us that Rasulullah is the hand of Allah on earth. وَيَدُ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ And his hand is on top of their hands. He's referring to Yadullah as Rasul. Why? Because he, we're talking about the action of Allah. We're not talking about physical hands. We're not talking about physical legs, or physical eyes, or so on. So. He, Allah Azza wa Jalla in the Holy Quran, He wants us to go beyond our our thinking, beyond our body, beyond our hands, meaning. We want the definition. What does it defend the define hand? Hand defined by something doing action. And the only person who is doing action is who? Is Rasulullah and Imam Ali. That's why he said, Balyadahu Mabsudatan, his both hands, not one hand. Same thing, when I said about the dimension of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I talked about all these things, we need to understand that Rasulullah is the golden race. Mm -hmm. If there's something beautiful, it's because of Rasulullah. Sure. If you want to go to Allah, it's because of him, not because of the body that con that contains mm -hmm. what his name Muhammad. No, in a bigger level, he is Ahmad. And what is Ahmad, I mentioned before, is Ahad. That will take you to who is really Allah. Is. Sure. It's the only way. So what is the dimension of Rasulullah? Mm -hmm. Is everything you know. All the dimensions. So we know in the, from the physics that 120,000 dimensions are created from those 12 names of Rasulullah. Because there's 10 names that Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned Rasulullah Quran, and he kept two names for him. So the 12,000 dimensions are made from his name. Mashallah. That's why when I said about the dimension of Rasulullah mm -hmm. Sallallahu I want to tackle all this subject. I've been doing this 110 lecture in Arabic, Mashallah. 50 lecture in English, mm -hmm. and 
I didn't cover even 0.01% of all this relief. MashaAllah. Brother Musa, uh, Muhammad, you know, a question that comes to my mind, and I'm sure of many of our viewers, is don't you think that you are making religion hard this way? I mean, the way you are explaining things, isn't religion a simple way? Uh, is it is it simple? So why why all this? Yeah, you see, this this question can go both ways. Mm -hmm. For example, some people they are convinced that there's one God and there's His Messenger is Rasulullah, and that's it. They don't really need more than that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really targeting those people. What I'm targeting the people who is fighting Islam with everything. You see, during Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, people were fighting Islam with the sword. These days, we have uh, knowledge, we have people who say that there's no God, we have people that say that uh, all this thing doesn't exist. So the only way to defeat Islam is by science, by the same weapon that they're defeating with. You see, we, we, I'm using the same weapon that those people are using it to destroy Islam. So I'm making religion hard. No, I'm not making it hard. Actually, I'm making it more acceptable. Mashallah. Because why? Because some people, they really don't like all these things. But, uh, for example, if someone is going to say, I don't believe in God, this person will sit and study. Why? Because he want to fight everyone else. And this person, this individual, will become very smart. So he needs a lot of information, someone who will know all these things, mm -hmm. to bring back all this together. And then put it to show him what is it. MashaAllah. You see? So I can be, yes, given something hard. But in reality, no, it's something more opening. Inshallah. Thank you very much for explaining that. Question uh, come through. Assalamu alaikum. You mentioned in your lectures that sending salawat 17 times uh, cures headaches. Yeah. Uh, does this work for other things? And what's the secret? Yes. The number of salawat is very important. Same thing like I mentioned. Why I said 17? Because 7 plus 1 equal 8. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ ثَمَانِيَةٌ Eight things will carry the throne of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Why? That's why there is 17, okay? We'll be able to take 1,700 or 17,000 or so on. Mm -hmm. The more you add zeros, actually, it's better. But let me tell you something. If a person that he gets close to Allah Azza wa Jalla so much through Rasulullah, by knowing Rasulullah, if he say it one time, he will not just cure the headache, he will cure the cancer. Wow. And I have proof on that. I have... I physically, I've been doing research recently from the science of water. Mm -hmm. so a, a scientist called, he, he wrote a book called The Message of Water. And he showed the energy, what they can they make. For example, when you start drinking and so on, say, for example, so on, all this will change the molecules inside water. So imagine if you are a person that's constructed with 80% water inside your body, mm -hmm. And you have a brain that is always thinking about salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. What will make? You will not just change the headache. You will change many things. So if you don't believe that, that, that this brother that this will cure, try it. Try it. It will cure. Thank yeah. you very much indeed uh, for answering that. Um, we've got the question back again regarding the, the middle. Uh, to maintain the middle praise. Now, I think the brother or sister's text saying that uh, surah number two, uh, Surah Baqarah, verse two, three, eight, uh, where it says, "Maintain middle praise." Can you please explain? And now, either uh, brother can um, just may maybe note that down. Uh, surah Baqarah, verse two, three, eight. Uh, if you could maybe explain this, or we can, inshallah, come back to this question if you would like. Yeah, well, uh, talking about this subject is very deep. I don't wanna. Okay. burn the subject for the brother just saying one information sure yeah but, but but over here mainly all the ulama refer to that salat the middle prayer but in reality it has a huge meaning different you know, if sure. we really a lot of different so i would prefer if we keep the subject uh, till later till i show all my evidence and mm -hmm. so i so sure. the other brother can really understand what i need sure. and and just um uh, just like to let the other viewers know that if there's any particular topics which is related to Muhammad Musa's uh, background, physics, science, mathematics, numbers, etc., 
Uh, we're getting a lot of text messages uh, who have shown an interest in the lectures of Brother Muhammad Musa. If there's any particular areas that you would like uh, the brother to clarify or to even um, to, to do some lectures on, on those particular subjects or in particular areas you need clarification, please do call in or text in and our studios, uh, our team will take this information and pass this to our brother so he's able to work on this. And indeed, as he's mentioned, he's, he's a servant for the Mu'mineen. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him jaza for his hard work. Uh, he's here for myself, for you, the viewers who are watching across the globe. This is something for all of us to appreciate and to try to understand, try to make an effort. And with all due respect to all our great ulama in this world who have done amazing work in propagating the religion of Ahlul Bayt salam. Indeed, we need to keep our minds open uh, to new knowledge. And of course, we, have, we do not have, we have hardly any knowledge. Uh, but when we have information regarding numbers and mathematics, and when this is applied, no doubt we appreciate the religion of Islam, the religion, um, as I think Brother At Atta mentioned from Canada, that nowadays, especially if we're lecturing, if we have our Muslim scholars and teachers who are uh, lecturing in different universities across the globe, we need to have logic. We need to make people understand. If we pick up the Quran, uh, and as Muhammad Musa is listening in to this, that if we pick up the Qur'an and try explaining to a non-Muslim why we should wear hijab or why we should be doing this, why do we pray, uh, why do we, for example, eat halal food, why do we avoid things like alcohol or pork, etc, etc. Surely there will be a logical reason behind this, a scientific reason behind this, not just a religious reason. Indeed, which, inshallah, Muhammad Musa can pick up on these things and, and elaborate and explain to myself and our viewers. Inshallah. So, brother... Do you want me to talk about it, you mean? Or? Please, yes, if you can. I mean, brother from Canada, he mentioned that nowadays, you know, it's not easy. With that, we need logic nowadays. It's, it's very important. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm dedicating everything I have for this reason. Mm -hmm. Even if... I receive an invitation from a regular university that they want to talk about whatever I'm presenting. Even they can bring their scientists or their teachers or whatever it is and bring all those people. And I, I can sit down with all my equipment and go one by one to tell them exactly what I'm doing. And with that, I'm very sure that I'm very sure that I'm going to reach every single heart sure. because we all the mainstream science and the, everyone outside in the West, they always spoke this that. The science is the only valid thing. So if they really, every single one believe that science is the only valid thing, so let me prove with science that Allah exists and Rasulullah is his own messenger and Imam Ali is the bottom of Rasulullah and those 12 disciples are very important for our existence. And I really leave it open. I really, I'm open to any invitation from any mosque or any university or any single one. Believe me, at the very beginning, Two years ago, I started my lecture with one person only. One person used to only, always attend. Yes, and later, alhamdulillah, more people came. Alhamdulillah, but the problem now mainly always with the space. Always with the space. So that's why I was, I'm now going more academic. I want, for example, in the masajid, they don't really accept the subject. Mm -hmm. They're really afraid what's going on. They don't understand what is it. I ask them to understand, <clears throat> be open. If they don't want to be, I'm open to go in the academic academic group, like, no, like sure. I can go to the college or university. And I think it's very important what you just mentioned, in going into the academic fields, being able to lecture in universities, going into colleges. Religion is not only for masajids or Islamic centers. Religion is not there to be um, spread through masajids or Islamic centers. Of course, those are the places where you will generally find um, 
scholars of different types of religion in churches, in synagogues, in uh, Islamic centers, in mosques, where they will be speaking about their particular religion or belief. And as you mentioned, Ahlul Bayt is for the whole creation, is for the whole of humanity and surely we cannot limit them to our Islamic centers or college but as you mentioned and that you are act actively working on this which we prayed Allah gives you success that we go into, that you go into lecture halls, you go into different gatherings where you can prove the existence of Ahlul Bayt not keeping religion to one side but working with religion and science and logic etc side by side to prove a point to someone who may do, who may not be believe in religion as you mentioned and i think that is very important coming back to the questions we ha I have one eye on the clock and you know time is running now um uh, brother muhammad one of uh, text come through saying that please can you do more lectures on fighting and protecting oneself from the shayateen and mm. from the evil of the unseen? Uh, that's a text that's come through, if you can do lectures on that. Also, a uh, uh, next qu uh, question is, how do you prove jinn with modern sciences? Yes, that I told you at the very beginning, mm -hmm. that we live in a dimensional world. Let me clarify what exactly dimension. For example, you are inside your car and you have a radio. You see, let's say, let's put the radio at 90.9 .9, and then you'll be hearing uh, maybe classic music. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you move this knob to 91.5, for example, and you have a different station. Why is that? Because there's different of frequency. Science has proved that frequencies are mating us. We are moving frequencies, for example, for me to exist, for me, to, for you to see me now, online, or over the globe, you, we have to use certain type of frequency. That's why you have a channel, and in the same box that you're watching this channel, there's a million other channels. Why? Because they are all existing in one only dimension. This is one dimension, and all these are frequencies. We are a different frequency from the gen. We're not from different dimension. Different dimension means we are outside here to a different layer of heaven. What do, what do I mean by that? When Dhul Qarnayn left, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that in Ahl al -Kahf, when he left Earth, he left to a different dimension. Mm -hmm. He didn't leave to a different frequency. When Imam Ali, he was over here with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have different narration that he was fighting jinn, he was fighting them in different frequency, not dimension. And he mentioned, Imam Ali there, dimension, the, the difference between dimension and frequency. Okay. So. Does the gen exist? Yes. We have a proof for that. We have many proofs for that. Yes. And one of uh, the lecture I made, I said, why Imam Mahdi still, why Imam Mahdi is absent? Why he's, he's not there? He's, he's behind the curtain. But why he's behind the curtain? And I got a frequency machine. He, the brother, he can find it on YouTube. And I showed by evidence that two flipping LEDs light, if you go beyond certain number, both will become on. If you go more higher, mm -hmm. both come off. Yes. You see, uh, that's very important to know. We are like these LEDs, light, light emitting diode. We are like those lights. The more frequency we are in, the more higher we are in inside the energy. So the gen is higher. Why? Because Allah has created them from fire. We cre are created from clay. Clay, the frequency of clay is absorbing only. So, the frequency of fire is giving. So much frequency. So one day soon is going to be those two universal clashes together. Same thing like used to be with Prophet Sulaiman. Why? Because Imam Mahdi, when he's gonna come, everything will be clashing. Mashallah. Thank you very much, brother Muhammad Musa. Unfortunately, we have actually we just got one minute remaining of the show. I wasn't. To be honest with you, it was our first live show with yourself. Wasn't expecting so many t uh, messages coming through, people who have called. There are people out there who show a lot of interest in your lectures. There are people out there who are very much interested in what you have to tell them, what you have to share with them. Dear viewers, this is, inshallah, the beginning of many different lectures by Muhammad Musa. As you know, currently residing in the United States, we do plan on 
uh, inshallah, inviting the brother to the United Kingdom uh, so that he can benefit the masses in this country. Uh, and of course, he's uh, benefiting people around the globe. I would like to thank brother Muhammad Musa, who has given time today um, to be here with us, the Alabet team, with you, the viewers, uh, to answer questions that you have put forward. Inshallah, uh, with your feedback, with your interest, we will continue to hold such live programs with our dear brother and we will continue to show his upcoming uh, new programs that he has mentioned where there will be more illustrations involved, where there will be more clarity in his uh, topics. So our younger youth, our elders, people across the globe can understand our brother's a message that he would like to portray, that he would like to share with us. Once again, there, uh, Muhammad, thank you for joining us. We will ask you to uh, come back again uh, live with us or from the Alabay Studios so that you can answer any questions and you can share your uh, knowledge, inshallah. Dear, dear viewers, thank you for joining us. Today was a very live and exclusive show for yourselves. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.